Hello and welcome back to Abandoned Mines of Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be covering the electric blasting machine. So the electric blasting machine was first invented in 1878 by a man named Julius Smith. So the whole purpose of these machines is to set off electric blasting caps. Um, the forerunner for the modern cap came about in the 1880s. Um, up until then, you would simply just have a, a spark gap in an explosive charge and so you'd have two wires that were close to touching but not quite and so when you send electricity to them it would arc across that gap setting off our explosive charge they then came up uh, in the 1880s with a high resistance wire style blasting cap and that's the still kind of what's used today and so if we look we covered electric blasting caps in our introduction to underground blasting videos. But we have one leg wire coming in, we have our bridge wire, and then we have our other leg wire heading out. So what happens is when electricity is sent, comes in through here, it heats up this bridge wire, which then sets off our explosive charge. In the early days, our charge was mercury fulminate. Now there's a myriad of explosives that are used. So this was contained inside of a metal shell and plugged at the back with sulfur. Um, sulfur has a very low mold, uh, melting point and was compatible with the explosives that were used. The wires were coated with cotton fiber and then soaked in asphalt. For mining, they usually soaked them in paraffin wax. Uh, this made them lighter in color and easier to see. Uh, you had aluminum and copper shelled Blasting caps, aluminum you don't want to use underground because when you set the cap off it would generate a lot of high temperature sparks and you don't want that in an environment with methane and coal dust and copper does not do that. And so if we have our blasting cap, we have it hooked up, it's in our dynamite, it's in our hole, we're ready to fire the shot. So with our blasting machine we have our plunger which is connected all the way down through. We have a dynamo, which is like a generator to generate our electric current. This has a small gear on it, which is then attached to this larger gear. Larger gear has a ratcheting mechanism attached to the plunger. And so as we draw this up, we don't want the gears to spin because we don't want to set our charge off yet. Down here at the bottom, we have a contact. And so what this does is this allows us to push our plunger down, get the dynamo up to speed to where it's generating enough current, and then when our plunger reaches the bottom, it pushes against this wedge, which then completes our electrical circuit, sending it to our blasting cap. So if we push this down real quick, you see how everything works. We'll do it a little bit slower. So again, we pull up. There's a ratcheting mechanism on the back of this gear. As we slowly push down on this, you can see the dynamo spinning. This whole time it would be getting up to speed. And then right there, our contacts closed and we're sending our voltage or our current down to our blasting cap. Uh, down here at the bottom, there's just a metal plate um, to keep the plunger from hitting a hole through the, the case. So this particular blasting machine is a Hercules 50 cap machine. And so Hercules was a manufacturer of blasting machines and blasting caps, explosives. They made a lot of different materials. And so when I say a 50 cap machine, if you were to take 50 blasting caps and hook them in series. So we have our blasting machine here, our lead wire going out. And now obviously you'd have a bit more distance. Uh, lead wires on a blasting cap are anywhere from 6 to 20 feet, they range in distance, but you want to obviously be farther back than that. So you have a spool of wire from your blasting machine up to your caps, but you would have them wired up in a series circuit. And so come in with one, one leg wire attached to your cap, wire out of that cap goes to the next, to the next, to the next. So we could set with this machine up to 50 of these blasting caps off at once. And so where that would be important is if you're doing, you know, your whole coal phase, blast everything down at once. As 
time went on and technology improved, they actually figured out how to make uh, a time delayed blasting cap. And so you could have different time ratings on it. Where that would be important is in both surface quarrying and if you're blasting hard rock underground. So here, if you'd imagine our tunnel in hard rock, it's extremely hard to do an undercut and you're not gonna do one. And so what you can do is if you'd imagine all these dots as our loaded shot holes. If we were to set all these off at once, it would just be absolute destruction. Um, you'd have stuff flying everywhere, a lot of damage you didn't want done. But if we had a time delayed cap, you could set that center hole off immediately. And so now what this would do is that blasts out. You would have, you know, it's not your ideal shot. It blows a lot of material straight back out. But now you have a, a hole in the center, so that's going to act as your pressure relief, kind of like your undercut. And then you could set these next four holes off around it. They're going to pull to the middle. And then you can delay these uh, outer holes for the last. And again, now you have a big hole in the center, and these all pull inward, so that's a center pull shot. So if we take, we got our meter there, and if you watch the needle on the meter, you can watch it jump as we push this down. And there it climbs back down. Do it so this style. Um, they, they came out with a smaller version. Um, it's a handheld. Kind of see it in, in some of the old war movies. It was the twist style. Um, they were used for quite a while, but most of these machines, if not all, have now been replaced by what's called a capacitor discharge system. Uh, so your blasting machine fits in your hand. Um, you press one button, it charges up a capacitor. You press your second button and it discharges that capacitor. Um, it delivers a lot more current in an instant uh, than one of these machines. Uh, for surface blasting and hard rock, um, underground as well, you can use what's called non-electric. Um, and that varies anywhere from deck cord to a material called non-L. Um, kind of about the size of a weed whacker string. It has a very fine powderized explosive on the inside. Um, it's actually, it's not recommended, but you can, with non-L tube, shock tube, you can hold it in your hand as the explosive goes through it, or as the explosion goes through it. Um, that's used in a lot of, like I said, a lot of the quarry work you see today, pipeline blasting. Um, it's very easily set up with time delays. Everything's quick connect. It's very simple and easy to use. So if anyone has any questions on um, the blasting machine showed here or anything that was mentioned, please let us know in the comments or, or shoot us a message on Facebook or, or comment on YouTube. And we'll get it answered either in the comments or I'll make another video to get it answered. Really appreciate everyone's support as always. I hope everyone's doing well. And if you could just like, comment, subscribe, share the bell button thing on YouTube, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, we do have some some big news we're working on. Um, hopefully, have that information out uh, probably in the middle of winter. Um, but we are hopefully working on a couple large projects that we're pretty excited to get started in. So again, thank you everyone for the support. I hope everyone's having a great day. Enjoy.